All right, how's everyone doing? I am Rich Chalenza. Thanks for tuning into the Rich Chalenza Show. So what I'm going to call today's podcast, or I should just say what I'm going to talk about, is trying to be perfect throughout my life took a major toll on me. And uh, my family has this saying, uh, there's no such thing as perfection, but if you don't aim for it, you'll never come close. And I think that was programmed into my mind at a very young age. And I have two parents that are really perfectionist in their own right. There's no question about that. My mother um, loves cleaning. Uh, everything has to be spotless, in order. Uh, food's got to be uh, you know, impeccable. Uh, if you go stay at her house, everything is beautiful. It's set up. It's it's great. It's amazing. You know, she's very particular. My father's obsessed with fashion to a certain degree. Uh, also with keeping things immaculate, very similar to my mother with the house, but he even does outdoor work as well. He loves, he's got a green thumb. He loves landscaping. He loves sports cars. He has a 1980 Zimmer that he keeps immaculate as well. And even when I worked with my father over the years, everything had to be very done his way, but it has to be very precise. And then when I got older, um, you know, I started to do many different things and I started, uh, making my own films and trying to, you know, when I created something, what, what I try to describe is I tried to make it perfect in my mind. So, and sometimes don't get me wrong. You may look at it and go, that's not perfect by any means. Like when you make an independent film, you're like, wow, he could have done this better. He could have done that. He should have done this or that. If I had more money, I would have obviously done things differently, but I only had a certain budget to work with within my films. But for the most part, I really got what I wanted out of it, especially for really never going to film school. I'm not saying it was perfect by any means. I don't think anything's really ever perfect. But I kind of did things because in my film, let's take my first film, Sore Losers, the audio wasn't really that good. And I could have made it better and I could have spent more money. I kind of wanted it a little shaky. I didn't want you to kind of hear everything. And everyone's like, no, the audio is supposed to be better than the visual. If you can't hear it and all this shit, I'm like, I wanted this to be like you were like a fly on the wall. Like you're watching a documentary, but like even to the next level documentary. Where, you know, if you're out in a restaurant or you're having discussions a lot of times or there's loud music or you're in different places, you don't always catch what someone's saying. And I know it's storytelling. Everything in there is very specific. But it wasn't, it was meant to be rough around the edges. That's kind of what life was. And I never explained that actually, except on this podcast right now. That's kind of what I was going for. And then in my second film, I did a lot better with audio and things because it was a different style film. But again, I wanted that film to be all nighttime shooting and uh, being about night. And not only that, I had my kids and I want to spend my days with my children. And my children were more important than any film. So I made a film based around me being able to spend all the time with my kids during the day, take them to school, or they were actually not even in school. They were with me most of the day. Um, or maybe sometimes going to daycare to have some fun or going different places. But I shot my film at night when the, I put them to bed. Literally, it was all nighttime shooting. Uh, then I went on to create my own clothing line and many other things. And I've been working on an app, my program, and YouTube, and my podcast. And again, if you follow anything that I do, by any mean, by no means to you, maybe it's perfect. And it's not perfect always in my eyes either. But what I've tried to do later in life is realize too is it not, it being, I, I guess I could say, I, I say this a lot, I turn it upside down in its head. I love the perfection to me is being imperfection where I don't want it to be anything else but what I create. And I think a lot of times we're always following others that are successful, which is wonderful. If you want to follow a formula, go do it. Um, a lot of times it works. Most times I don't believe it does work. A lot of times you just have to figure out your own path. I don't care if you've gone to college. I don't care if you've been in business for yourself or whatever you've done throughout your life. Most of the time you understand when you get out on your own, it's usually a lot different than you think. And the true formula is the one that you create. Sure, there's laws and certain things we have to follow. But any business that I've been involved in, anything I've ever done, you know, I don't care how much I read about it, how much I studied when I went to go do it. Everything is different. And that could go for negotiating, that could go for sales, that could go for anything. It could go for anything. And I can give you all the advice in the world, but most likely you're going to just, 
you know, take it with a grain of salt and then go figure it out for yourself. And back to perfection too, I think what, I think a lot of people go through this, wanting everything to be perfect, and I get it, within their life. But don't let that one make you crazy. Because I think the one thing you got to realize in life, you can kind of control what you're doing in your life to a certain degree. But you definitely cannot control all the things coming outside of your life, coming at you. Different things changing constantly. You're definitely not going to control anybody else outside of your world. I'll tell you that for the most part, at least in America or North America, I know. Um, that goes for your, you could be married, you could have a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever the case may be, your kids, family members, friends, colleagues, you are not going to control them. Okay, I have a newsflash for you. So I think too, when people are trying to be very uh, specific or perfect, again, you have a lot of issues because people don't understand you. And then you're like, well, you have to understand, I, I want it this way. Well, maybe they don't want it that way. Okay, and that could be in your household, that could be in business. And a lot of times, even when I'm with my father, say, for instance, and we're talking about certain things and how precise he is regarding, you know, certain things and how he wants it a certain way, it's his way. It's not my way. And sometimes I could find myself wanting to argue over certain things, but I sit back and go, this is my father. What am I doing? What am I going to argue for? But then on the other side, when I'm doing a lot of things, I realize with people, I do the same thing to others. And I had to learn to sit back and go, listen, regardless what I do, I don't care if I'm making a film, I don't care if I'm doing a YouTube with someone or I have a co-host on my podcast, I have to be open-minded. Because back to some things that I realized in life, the more open-minded I was and the more, I guess you could say, I just enjoyed the moment and kind of just not got caught up with everything having to be perfect and if it wasn't being miserable, or complaining about it, it was just a totally different experience. You know, and also when I was trying to make everything perfect, again, you know, that just weighed on me. I didn't let things breathe, or as I like to call them, get like rich or thick, and let things just evolve. I was trying to constantly, I can't say restrain it, but control it to the point where it was just, it, it makes you bonkers. Um, so I just wanted to do a podcast on this because I think a lot of people out there, you know, that are, you know, they're, they're obsessed with things being perfect. And I get that too. I understand if you want to have an immaculate, you know, workplace, you want to look a certain way. And believe me, I'm still obsessed with say maybe fitness, grooming, uh, to a certain degree, still fashion and all these things. I'm not saying I'm letting myself go, but I am saying that, you know, there's a lot to life and you getting caught up with always thinking about how things have to be a certain way and if they're not that way, you get upset. A lot of times those things are not worth it. All right? So anyways, hopefully you got something out of that, but please don't make yourself crazy is basically what I'm saying. And like I said earlier, nothing's perfect. I don't care how you look at it. You can bullshit yourself all day but there's always something that can be improved on I don't care what it is and then there's you know whatever it is what it is all right if you get a chance check out my YouTube channel it's Rich Chalenza I'm also on LinkedIn Twitter Facebook and Instagram and uh, I'm gonna wrap it up there take care and I wish you nothing but the best